Pope of Alexander and some of Hercules, of Hector and Lysander and such great names as these. Hello and welcome to this Battle Mech Overview. Today we are going to be looking at another Word of Blake machine, one that we've been getting every once in a while recently with the bunch of the other ones. This one I'm a little bit more partial towards. I kind of enjoy it. It's not a terrible machine to work on, at least. Nothing too odd about it and nothing that I can't replace fairly easily. And we're talking about the Light Ray. E-Scout is one of the most important roles on the battlefield ever since uh, Battlefield started, really. And some people might think it sounds odd to be scouting an 8 to 10 meter tall machine, but most battle mechs are equipped with tons of EWAR buffers and all sorts of other tools that make them pretty hard to see on most radars. Once you've actually started messing with the tools necessary to see and not see battle mechs compared to what is available in Let's say pre-space age technology, I've seen some people try to see battle mechs and things like that using traditional radars. It just doesn't work. This is a role that's been ongoing since the Star League era with the Wasp and has been improved on and moved around ever since. Most of those scouts really stand on the smaller side of battle mechs in your light class mostly just so that they can be nimble, fast, and, well, let's face it, disposable. A scout is meant to be lost, unfortunately. Of course, there is the concept of heavy scout that everybody keeps trying to make for battle mechs, and I have to say, whenever they do that, the majority of the time, what they end up with is a cavalry mech or a skirmisher instead. Right before and during the Jihad, the Word of Blake add a few mechs trying to fit that scout role, in all sorts of weight class. You had the rather fantastic little redshift that I actually quite appreciate when they walk into the shop because it's a decent little machine and a really, really expensive and a sneaky Raptor 2, which used different stealth technology. The redshift really uh, was loaded with electronic warfare tool, a spotting laser, making it a good scout and a spotter for artillery missiles, which is pretty useful. It was still expensive, but not the most crazy thing you can see on modern battlefields. The Raptor 2, on the other hand, with the null signature system that's on it, which allowed it to basically be invisible, was crazy expensive and most people can't fix those nowadays. The last primary scout for our friends at the Word of Blake was the Light Ray. The Light Ray was Martinson's armament third try at making mechs for the Word of Blake, and they had a factory in Australia, which is a large landmass on Terra. It's basically the largest island on the planet, if you are not super familiar with Terran geography. And they were pumping out initiates and Spartans for the cause and to make a decent amount of money. And they were also starting to build some of those Celestial Series battle mech. The Center Marshal St. James uh, commissioned a new heavy scout. Martinson just threw her at in the ring and won the contract with the Light Ray. The production of it evolved over time, but the base design was a 55-ton scout with 10.5 ton of ferrofibrous armor, a top speed of almost 120 kilometers per hour with a massive 385 XL engine and an endo steel skeleton. That whole thing, of course, had a massive price tag, and Martinson was very, very happy to produce them. The original light ray came out during the Fedcom Civil War, so quite a bit in the head of the Jihad, and it kind of reflects the technology of the era. The real first of was actually the LGH-4Y, which is actually rather rare, but it cemented the early design using a Tron L-13 large pulse laser, a pair of diverse optic ER medium laser, and a diverse optic small laser. This one also had a pair of uh, two tube SRM launchers mounted on it, which gave it some crit-seeking capabilities. The thing is, uh, the one that actually reached mass production was actually the LGH-4W, which uses a targeting computer instead of those SRM tubes, as soon as the word of Blake stole the technology from the Federated Commonwealth. There's another variant in that same era, which is the 5W, which takes out the large pulse laser to replace it with an ERPPC, to give you some range instead of precise firepower. All of this is actually kept, uh, well, Decently warmed using 10 double heat sinks. If you're using the ERPPC variant, you're probably not going to enjoy it. 
with the other variants, it's just going to run odd. For the glorious Oli War, well, Martinson started building more era-specific designs featuring a C3i computer, since that was what uh, the word of Blake really liked. This basically replaced the targeting computer on most of those more modern models. The 6W is an evolution of the 5W, with an ERPPC and three ER medium lasers as primary weapons. We actually see those being retrofitted in various factories from 4Ws and 5Ws, and sometimes we get them here and we look at the serial numbers and something just looks odd about it, well, it's because originally it was a 5W, which got some of its parts swapped out. The 7W was a departure from our base design, and it used a snubnose PPC, an ER medium laser, and a pair of three tubes MML multi-missile launchers to fire both LRMs and RMs. To fit that in, they actually put an XL gyro in, making the price even more crazy. I am not really a big fan of that 7W model, but it does come up every once in a while. As with most things, the light ray can be used as a heavy scout, but honestly, it's going to end up in cavalry and skirmisher roles far more often, especially since it doesn't carry any dedicated EOR equipment. While we're working on retrofitting a lot of them back to 4Ws and 5W standard from the Torian and Merrick customers bringing them in, there's a few people who actually go in and say like, yeah, can you actually turn this into a somewhat decent scout? And we look around and, well, we've got enough room here if we take out that targeting computer to put in an active probe and an ECM. In that particular case, it's going to be half decent as a scout, but you're going to lose a little bit on your accuracy. The light ray itself is probably not going to be produced anytime soon, and you're probably not going to have Martinson in your uh, address book since they're pretty much gone at this point. I'm not sure if anybody in the Ilkhan government will want to have them around building weapons, and nobody in the Republic really wanted them around either. So if you find a light ray in working order, you might want to try to keep it around or find someone to be able to supply you with parts and we'll be glad to help you keep it running so i hope you guys have a very nice rest of your day and i'll see you guys later bye bye